Now, did you wash your hands before you sat down to have breakfast? Well, what may be a habit for us must, of course, be drilled into our children. We know it stops the transmission of disease, but just how often should we be washing? And should we be using soap? Who better to answer these questions than our resident doctor, Carl? When I was a kid, everybody had to wash their hands before they went to the table to eat. What happened? Well, you're saying we don't do that anymore? No. Do you make your kids wash their hands before they go to the table? We try. But you know how hard it is yeah, with kids. Yeah, it's sort of like pushing toothpaste back in the tube. <laughs> yeah. But there's the counter-argument is that we're too clean that, and that's causing problems, that we're not exposed to enough bacteria. Yes and no. But, OK, so if, if you have look at kids who wash their hands four times a day, including before meals, they will have 25% uh, fewer days off school and 50% uh, fewer tummy bugs. So just washing the hands will stop that. So that's good. So you want to get some bugs, but just not too many. All right. Now, we should first say that, that I mean, we've got bacteria living naturally on our skin anyway. And I think, what, there's some 100,000 bacteria living in each square centimetre of our skin. Yeah, and they're, they're in two Which populations. Which is good. Yeah, they're, 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 because, because they're there, the resident ones, they stop the bad guys from moving in. So you've got the residents and the transients. And as you wash your hands uh, and you wash your body, the, the population of the resident ones who live there all the time, they sort of change a bit, but they're basically fairly similar. They live in the nooks and crannies. It's when you don't wash or you wash too much, that the bad guys can come in. Washing too much can get clean things up and let the bad guys in. Well, this comes down to soap. Does that make a difference if you're using soap? And what sort of soap? Okay, so with soap, we started off inventing that a couple of thousand years ago, and it's quite easy to make it. You just you get some ashes of a plant and rub it with some fat, and then you dry it. And if you want it to be smooth, you then you know, grind it and then shove it back together again. And if we look at the science of it, it comes down to the molecular, molecular structure of soap, doesn't it? Oh, there's, yeah. like, there's the slippery part and the, and the sticky part. That's right. So your skin is slightly acid, and there are all these, you suppose you've been to the bathroom, there's these bad guy bacteria there. And then, uh, firstly, the soap goes in and lifts them off. It dissolves them away from your skin. It neutralizes the acidity because it's slightly alkaline. It lifts them off. And then the molecule has one side that loves to stick to the fatty bad guys because it sticks to the fatty bacteria. And then you add water. And it, the other end of the molecule sticks to the water, so it washes so, so them it off. So it picks up the dirt and then carries it then away. Then carries it away. And with regard to soap itself, it's kind of killing bacteria-ish, maybe. We don't really know. We don't understand well, what it does. Well, okay, what about the antibacterial soaps that are oh. proliferating the market at the moment? No? <laughs> no, what they no do is that they, they don't make any difference, except they lead to an increase in antibiotic bacteria resistance. Um, you know, it's a bad thing that they're building up in our society that the bacteria get resistant. So what the soaps do is, in general, the soaps will kill some bacteria between 10 seconds and 20 minutes, but if your soap is wet, there are some bacteria that will just live on there indefinitely. So the main job of the soap is to remove, it's, it's the washing. So when I was a medical doctor, for the first time I learned how to wash my hands. So you do this sort of thing, and then you do that sort of thing, and then you do one finger at a time, and you work your way through. With kids, you're saying, obviously, important they wash their hands. Yet, they shouldn't necessarily do it with soap, should they? Certainly kids, say, under five or six. You can get dermatitis. Soap can be too powerful. So just washing the hands alone. If they've got a hard dirt that won't come off, if they've got a bit of grease, go for the soap. But what we do is I use sorbolin glycerin. Ever since I was a doctor in the kids' hospital in 1985, I have never used soap since then on my body. Because uh, what soap... So you use soap to wash your hands, but yeah, not elsewhere. No, nowhere else. And so what happens is that when you're using the soap, the soap removes the fat from your skin. You dries make, out your skin. Dries your skin. You, you, you make more fat either... From Gets dead, rid of the good bacteria. Yeah, and knocks them off. And, you, and the fat is either the sebum from your sebaceous glands or it's the dead skin cells. You can't make the dead skin cells go back any faster, you know, produce any faster, so you make a fat that is higher in sebum. Most of us can get away with it, but... The people from Ireland, Scotland with red hair and freckles, they're the ones who'll get dermatitis. And at the kids' hospital, they used to come in looking like you'd sprayed them with red paint. And we take them off the soap, put them onto the sorbolene, and it would, in many, but not all cases, go away. So in kids, 
Overusing soap can, on their bodies can lead to dermatitis. Hands, yes, the rest of the body use sorbolene and glycerin. Does the temperature of the water make a difference? They used to think you have to have it hotter, but no, bacteria will survive up to 80, 100 degrees C, and you're going to get full thickness third degree burns at about 45, 50 degrees, uh, 55. So the, the studies have been done Tepid, just warm, hand temperature or maybe a little bit warmer is perfectly fine. Hot does not make it better and in fact makes you more likely to get dermatitis and then less likely to use soap. And I was always told, okay, important to wash your hands, but also equally important to dry them. Yes. But hang on, you're drying them on a towel. Wouldn't the towel then pick up all the bacteria? You try to use a different part of the towel, so paper is good. But if the worst comes to the worst, remember the most important thing is just washing hands. If you go to a bathroom, a public bathroom, and I've talked to the infectious diseases officers about this, and there's no soap and there's no paper, wash your hands thoroughly with the water as best you can, and then just rub them on your jeans. And after all, cleanliness is next to godliness, and it does make us feel better, doesn't it? It does, it can remove guilt. Dr. Carl, thanks very much. Thank you, Dr. Andrew. Yeah, particularly on a Sunday. Uh, yeah, that was always my question as to like, you, when there is no hand towel mm -hmm. or the, the air blower is not working, what do you do? Well, you're saying just wipe on in your clothes. But Andrew, we were just talking, my little boy has just, he's just, you know, <laughs> it's too much information, but there is snot everywhere. Oh, We've yeah. called him snotty, unfortunately. <laughs> Poor Sean, he can't, he's not here to defend himself. But in those instances, what do you do? Keep washing your hands. Really? Well, he can't, but you can. I just think to me, and you're also told as a young mum, you know, make sure they get dirty, otherwise, they, you know, they'll get um, so many um, allergies. And actually, from yeah, we're what not I exposed to from, enough, but from, we are. From, from what I understand, though, that's it's not actually true that there's broader factors at play, and it's not just because you've made your kids, you know, put um, the detergent. I don't on think you should worry. You're probably exposed to enough bacteria. <laughs> Andrew's just concerned about being exposed <laughs> right, to my bacteria. <laughs>